Thank you so much to Viva Lux Musica for this amazing performance. And we are so lucky to have our former Young Forscher back with us for this edition of the contest. Now, let's come back to the science contest. Benjamin Frank from the Lycée Classique de Diekirch will present his project to the members of a jury. It is called, What are Virophages? Let's find out here shortly. Hello, my name is Frank Benjamin and I'm fascinated by small things, so that's why I'm presenting virophages. Uh, I'm trying to keep it simple because I explained it to my mom like five times already and I'm still not sure if she, if she understands. So, how do they work? So first, I'll introduce the main characters. First of all, we have this tiny little cute being that's called a virophage. Then, we have its enemy. It's the giant virus, which is basically just a virus on steroids. Followed by the host of the giant virus, it's this lovely little amoeba. And um, once infected with giant viruses, there's two outcomes. First, it will survive, grow stronger, and become a surviving amoeba, or it will explode. <clears throat> so, and then you have the fourth player, and that's the surrounding, and it's filled with other innocent little amoeba. So, this is how the infection all starts. The giant virus is, like I said, pretty, pretty big, and that's why it has another mechanism to enter a cell like any other virus would. Uh, it's basically as if it's eaten by the cell. So it looks like a tasty snack, but it isn't. And once inside, it will uh, create a viral factory where it will mass produce itself, and the result, kaboom. And after that, you'll have the surrounding amoeba surrounded by numerous giant viruses, and this will all just repeat until everything's done. So now, let's add into that equation a virophage, a small little thing, almost particle-like once it was discovered, that will latch onto the giant virus. And upon entering, you'll see the difference. The viral factory not only produces giant viruses, but also virophages and virophages are produced more easily and faster, and the resources are therefore much more quickly um, yeah, empty, and therefore there will be a diminishing number of giant viruses uh, produced, sometimes even up to 70%. And you'll have a strong surviving amoeba, uh, yeah, amoeba that will release a few giant viruses and a lot of virophages that will once again latch onto the giant viruses, and yeah, so forth. So, big deal. <clears throat> but that's not all. The important part, which is really interesting, is how they all play together in the ways of DNA. Because here you see that the virophage will implement a sequence of its DNA into the host amoeba. And uh, once it survives, it will grow stronger, obviously, but also have a defense mechanism against those giant viruses. But not everything's so good because the same can happen to the giant viruses. They will adapt, they will use the virophage to, be, to grow resistant. And uh, yeah, in general, there is a lot of splicing and uh, yeah, changing of DNA that's happening. And um, therefore, they may even be the cause of diversity in microorganisms and therefore bigger things in general. But yeah, so. Um, it's a really recent discovered thing, and um, so it's been, uh, the giant viruses were discovered in 2008, so it's not long ago. And there's still really a lot to be understood about them, uh, a lot to be researched. Uh, we don't even know how evolution plays a role in the creation of these little things. But it's just a really, really interesting topic, and I really hope that I'll get to I figure out some more stuff, and maybe we'll see each other again. Thank you. One, two, three, 
Happy birthday to you. You did not expect that, did you? No, not at all. Thank you. How was it to present actually during the uh, the birthday? Like you should be partying with friends right now. What are you doing here? Um, well, I think I got some priorities, and uh, yeah, I've been really looking forward to um, today to present, and uh, yeah, so. Partying can come later. Okay, right. So it's kind of a birthday present to come here for you as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we thought about like buying you a pie pie or something like that for the science. <laughs> but, uh, um, also, uh, thank you for participating. You know, like the viewers can actually see an interview of you on internet that came yeah. out. Uh, how did you feel about that? Um, it was. Uh, I was a bit nervous, to be honest, about uh, being released and everything. But I got really a lot of great feedback, uh, and I'm really happy about it. Yeah, so, yeah, I invite everyone to watch it because it's a good insight. And a last point about like your performance or for preparation is like you actually participated, as we can see in the reportage, to the Science Next um, experience that we organized at the uh, yeah. foundation. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Um, First of all, it's just great. Uh, all these workshops that were um, set up, they really are educative about uh, things that wouldn't even really come to my mind because uh, like getting the ideas to even start a project, uh, that was one of the first workshops and it was just amazing. There was great performance in it. Uh, and yeah, I learned a lot. And all of these things that I uh, kind of got through all these workshops were really useful to me, not only in this project, but also in general. Uh, yeah, with school and in my private life, like uh, there was a workshop about presenting, how to present properly, mm -hmm. which is also really useful if you have to present in school. And yeah, so... Um, I had a chance to watch a tiny bit of those presentations and workshops and actually, you know, like when you see them like online, then you think, okay, maybe I don't need that and stuff. But like when you're there, you realized how much there is to learn about the topics and uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have some questions? Yeah, first of all, thank you for the great presentation. Um, I think it was very impressive how you brought across that complex topic in such a you know, vivid and fresh way. Um, obviously, for me, it was the first time hearing about that, that topic. But um, did you do the graphics by yourself? I did. Um, I was struggling a lot with how I would do and structure my presentation. I was sitting there and I was uh, thinking to myself, it's a complex topic, but I really don't want to get into all those details about like uh, the DNA transfers and everything, because that's actually a really huge part. So I asked myself, okay, well, what can I do? I could just try to, uh, because only five minutes, that's not a lot. So I. Uh, thought to myself, okay, I'll just explain how they work, uh, and um, since it's not really that uh, researched yet, there's not a lot of uh, cartoony yeah. uh, drawings on the internet, so I had to just sit down with a pen and paper and uh, get at it, and yeah. <laughs> I heard like recently on radio podcasts and uh, things like this that uh, people have more and more interest in the biophages, but um, uh, do you think the pandemic, like the last two years, had an impact on your choice for the topic, or...? Definitely. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube and there was a video from Kurzgesagt, which I can only yes. recommend, uh, yeah. about bacteriophages. And mm -hmm. I was looking at it and I was really impressed and I just thought to myself, well, uh, works really well. So uh, we're in this pandemic, maybe we could speed something up if we had something similar, just that it works with viruses. And uh, a friend of mine just looked at me and said, well, I heard there's virophages. I don't know nothing about them. And I looked into it and it was just really... Well, I was astonished by uh, all the complexity to it and uh, also the potential in it. So, yeah. Would that be something you would like to push for the next issue of the Young Contest? Um, I'll try to get now, uh, now get into the practical ways uh, of the research and, uh, yeah, therefore also then uh, maybe preparing another funny presentation for so next year. Back. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming back. We are glad. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Looking into that topic, is that something you consider also for your future career? Look into further studies? Maybe, maybe. It's, uh, it's really fascinating. I myself am more of a marine biology guy, but um, all these tiny things, I mean, uh, virophages and giant viruses also rely on aquatic environments, so maybe there's some overlapping. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And thanks a lot for your presence, for your presentation, and we wish you good luck for the contest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much.